let's welcome Who's That Meta Dare? Good day, Tamers. Welcome back to another episode of me, the Gear Swiftly, and the wonderful Who's That Meta Deck, episode 9 of probably 10 if we're going to get this Shoutmon deck done. But today, we have the real blue Meta Deck. Not that blue OTK that's going to walk up into the house and take your wife and take your kids and take your cards. No, this is the real blue Meta Deck. This is the Hex of Blue taking your kids, getting out of the house, done. You're dead. It's just you. It's just me. In the game. 1v1. Go into the Shadow Realm. With all that uh, theatric cut the way. The babies. So the babies here are four Uthmons and a Sunamon. Choices. We have the Sunamon from the structure deck. And it is going to give you the extra 1000 DP when your opponent's Digimon does not have a distribution source. Or we have the Uthmons. Which is once per turn. You will gain a draw effect if you have an opponent's Digimon that has no Digivolution sources. And this is basically the gist of this whole thing. You can use the Bukumon if you want to. I don't think the Bukumon going to be that great. Because it only really affects level 4s and below. So you're only ever going to really remove the base source than the Rookie. So I think these are probably your best options. If you'd prefer the DP over the uh, Ukumon's draw effect. Because draw is not always that terrible in blue decks to be honest. You can look at putting yourself into a situation where you're just going to have four of the Sunamons instead of the Ukamons. Or you can go two and three, three and two, however you fancy yourselves. Now, for the rookies, we're going to go with four of the Blue Kamon. We're going to go with four of the Electmon just for a cheap dilution source just so we can get on the field as quick as we can. We're going to go with four of the Promo Gomons. And we're going to go with four of the Seokomons. Now, this isn't just specifically the best things here. I just think Sakamon is something you want to see soon. It stops green from doing things, it stops the activation of hidden potential discovered, it stops the activation effect of uh, Mega Fusion, and what I mean by that is you can activate these cards but you don't get the effect of them, so hidden potential doesn't save you that 5 memory, you will still suspend your Digimon and then your opponent will go, hey look I have a Sekamon, or I have a Cutemon, or I have a Gaussmon, and you still have to spend the memory, so it doesn't help. With Mega Fusion, I think it's reduce your Omnimon by 6. Not 100% sure. I think it's that's what it is. But yeah, that doesn't affect it. So basically, you still have to pay the 6 memory. Most Omnimons are pretty good where they have like the whole you want to spend when you Digivolve or you gain an effect still. So the journey cost it to be quite useful. That's why Sukumon is here. Just because I think it's actually pretty good Digimon, just the effect itself. Then we have the blue command, and this is obviously the full form of this actual line, which is the Hexa Bloomon line, and that is the when well, you trash a dilution source, one of your opponent's Digimon, you gain a memory. So, yeah, this deck's me really, really good at gaining memory. So that's why I wanted the draw power from the Ukmons. But again, this is all down to you. It depends how you feel, depends what you like. This is where I, I think it was good. And then the Gomon is when you trash a dilution card from one of your opponent's Digimon gain a memory again just the exact same thing it's cheaper to play and it has 1000 dp it's a lot scarier it's definitely going to be uh did you as fast as you can but you'll see when we go to our champions why the gomon is here as opposed to just having the blue commons as the only one that has this now there is the gabumon from the structure deck i think structure, i don't think it's bt1 but i think it's in the player's choice if not then we'll discuss it here and that is it will do the same effect, but only to a level 5 and less. So it does get awkward when you're trying to get rid of your level 6 target on under, like I say, an Omnimon or a Millenniummon or a Chaosmon. And that's where things get a little bit awkward, to say the least. So for the champions, we're going to go with four of each, and that's four Peldramon, four Cloamon, and then four Gorillamon. Peldramon here is essentially just a champion version of the Zudamon from the structure deck. It's a fantastic card. We'll see more of him in a bit. And he's just here for that. He has no inherited effects. But to be honest, what he's doing for us the deck is fantastic. And then we have Clomon, Just a one-cost blocker. Essentially, every deck should be running these one-cost blockers now. Just to make it so you have a blocker in play. Just so you can survive for another turn or two. And then we have Gorillamon. Which is, again, a one-cost level for Digimon. Sometimes you just want to get to the next Digivolution source as fast as you can. In this case, they're pretty good. 
and Grillamon's pretty chunky monkey boy. Uh, Grillamon will be getting a alter art reprint in the V Drummond deck, which is coming out with BT6 for us. So we're having to wait till well, I think it is October now. It's pre release is like the first week of October, so maybe if it's held back a bit, maybe the end of October, but we will see. The alt art is more cartoony, so if you're more interested in more cartoony art, then you got your Grillamon. Ultimate lineup we have Cry's Peldramon. We have four of these. We have Zudamon. We have four of these. Now, Cry's Trash the Bottom Delusion card of all of your opponent's Digimon on a Digivolution effect. That is pretty good. Pretty powerful, pretty scary. But it also has an inherited effect, which is if your opponent has a Digimon with no distribution cards in play, this Digimon gains Security Attack plus one. Now, that's pretty good, and you'll see why it's pretty good in a minute when we go to the Mega. But Zudamon. So Zudamon has the exact same effect as the Peldramon from earlier. And yeah, just getting rid of two Givolution sources from an opponent's Digimon is really good. Especially if your opponent is playing green. Green really likes Digiburst right now. That's kind of the thing they're still doing in this set because they were the only archetype that carried on with Digiburst, which is pretty good. But yeah, Digiburst kind of gets like cracked on the head and knees. It gets a bit crippled in this. Your opponent's not really gonna be throwing down any Nidhogg plays. If they get lucky, maybe they'll get like an extra plus one on their security for their Gran. Maybe they'll get maybe one suspension off on their Hercules Gavitarium I do think Green's going to have a bit more trouble this set, but it's not as awful as people think it is. But yeah, you get a lot of removing Digivolution sources in this deck. And I think that's pretty good to find them out. It's obviously going to help things out like uh, fighting against Yellow. If you can get Angie Woman off the bottom of, say, a Lord Nightmon. This does make it easy for you to get out of those extra recursions of playing two Digimon if you're at free or less security. Also, you can remove other effects that will reduce uh, DP on inherited effects as well. Also stops uh, red OTK. Which, uh, oh no, not the red OTK deck. The king has come for his crown, so here is Hex the Blue Mon. Playing four of these in this deck. I don't truly know if this is where I want just to have these four megas and that's it. I do think that you should have six megas at least in a deck just so you have more options and we'll go over what we could put in here that has a similar effect at the end of the player's choice. But for now, Hex Blue Mon is here and Hex Blue Mon is a pretty badass guy. It has, when attacking, trash up to two Jillusion cards from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. Then, if your opponent has a Digimon with no Jillusion cards in play, this Digimon gets jamming. All turns, your opponent's Digimon with no Digimon cards can't attack or block. So the reason why this is so good, you, you can think about it, is basically, if I've wiped out all your Digivolution sources, or you've wiped out all your own Digivolution sources, you, you're kind of stuck in limbo now, guys. So... If you have one Digimon in play that has no Digimon resources on gaining extra things, if all of your Digivolution, if all of your Digimon in play have no Digivolution sources, then no one on your side of the field is doing anything for a turn until you can either Digivolve up or get something else on the field that can attack. So this will save you from getting just smashed down on like turn two if you can get this out super early. Obviously, if you only do the Digivolution Sources for its own channel and lines, it's just wiping out basically the full line. So you go Bluka. Bluka doesn't do anything until you attack. You go into the ult uh, the champion, which does two, so it's going to take away the baby and the rookie. You go into your ultimate, takes away the champion. You then go into this. You then attack. You take away the ultimate. So if the only thing on the field is that mega, that mega can't attack you back the next turn or fight back. So that's pretty good. And it's also very scary. Also, this also trashes too as well. So, yeah, it's, it's just going to stop you from having any fun at any time, any way, any place, but anyhow. And then we go to Project Omega Activate. So the only reason why this is here is sometimes that you might just be in a situation where you've got extra memory. It's the last, like, security attack of the turn. It's like, so I'm going to go for game. I digivolve into this. I then attack. And then you can uh, you can win. Obviously, if they've got a blocker on the field, you've got to be careful because obviously not everyone's just going to go like, oh yeah, just attack me and kill me, let's go to the next game. And it, that could be literally the thing that turns the tide of the battle. But otherwise, it's pretty good. I do like Omnimon in this deck. Again, I'm not sure about having only four megas and that's going to be a bit of rough. But we will go over that in a second. And then for the last section here, we have your reign ends now. So we have four of the Absolute Blasts, which is Trash the Bottom Devolution card of one of your opponent's Digimon. Then, return one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards to the bottom of the owner's deck. 
So this guy's pretty good, obviously, as we've already said, he goes for everything that stops your opponent from bursting or using inherited effects or essentially be able to do anything on the field. If you're a bit more worse aware and you need to get things off the field, for instance, say like your opponent has a 1500 body and all they have to do is basically wait for you to uh, try and punch through but you can't, you can always just send it back or if they've got a mega on the field and you know that they've got a level 7 waiting to come out, bounce it back to the, the deck. Obviously it's not a deletion so they can't get a non-deletion effect. This is really good for things like the Zawert, I believe, with the deletion effect. It gets rid of the rookies that have deletion effects as well. Um, I think there's possibly some ultimates that have on deletion effects. But no, this is this is really good for getting things with deletion effects. It's, get, it's good at getting rid of Cranimon. Cranimon can get basically rid of by DP reduction or bouncing, and this is this is your bouncing. And then for our tamers, we have Matt Ishida. We have two of these, and we have two of the Sauras and Joes. The reason why this is because when you play a blue Digimon card, your turn, when you play a blue Digimon, you can suspend this tamer to trash the bottom Digivolution card of one of your opponent's Digimon. Removition of Digivolution Source's deck it makes sense that you want this in here. And then you have Sora and Joe, which is the start of your turn. If the Digimon with no Digivolution cards is in play, you may gain two memory. So if you have one of these out and you have a Matt out, that's five memory return. And then your turn, when you attack with a blue Digimon, you may suspend this tamer to trash up the two Digivolution cards. For the bottom of your opponent. Again, this is just basically going out full on war. Especially if you've got Hex to bloom on out really early or you're building up to him. And you can get away of not doing anything for a turn. This can basically save your game, really. And then we're gonna go on to the player's choices. Now there's probably there's probably a lot more than this, but this is the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. And that is the we have Hammer Sparks. Hammer Sparks is good for gaining memory. I don't think this deck is gonna really suffer for gaining memory. We, there's just so many ways to get memory in this deck. I do think draw power might be the issue. We have Kaiser Nails, which is a choose a Digimon Digivolution card placed under one of your Digimon and play it as another Digimon without paying its memory cost. Now, this might be really good for paying, let's say, you take out the uh, Peldramon, you put it on the field, and then you Digivolve up again because it doesn't have an inherited effect, so it's not affecting your Digimon that way. So I think that's probably where you would put this in here, just so you can pay four to put basically a four cost back onto the field. And then maybe Digivolve up again and just keep playing through that. We have Sorrow Blue, which is choose one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards. That Digimon can't attack or block until the end of your opponent's next turn. This could be a case of that you're stuck, you don't have your Mega out yet. It's only a two cost, but your opponent's Digimon doesn't have any Digimon sources. So it can just sit there basically for a turn. You'd have to worry about blocking, you'd have to worry about it attacking you next turn. So you can maybe go for a hit on the security. You'd survive. You're suspended, and now you worry about being murdered. Well, not so much now. You've got your Sorrow Blue out, so it's okay. We have Matt Ishida. If your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution card, gain a memory at the start of your turn. It's a two cost. This is pretty good. This might be something that you want to put in here if you want to do a um, hybrid kind of build where you put in a few hybrids. You do this weird um, take out maybe two Gorillas, put in two Lobos so they have the evolution effect, and that's just there basically to hit at security if you're doing well. We have the Joe here, which is uh, your turn. One of your opponent's Digimon cards is trashed. You may suspend this time to gain more memory. It's free cost Joe. It's not terribly priced, but at the same time, gaining memory is very easy in the deck already. So it's something you might not want to do. Then we have the rare Ikakumon, which is inherited effect. This Digimon cannot be blocked by your opponent's Digimon with no devolution cards. Again, this might be something, like I said, get to your ultimate stage. You just need to strike the last hit. They can't, they, the only thing they can do is block you. Saves them another turn. Well, if they've got this card on there, or you've got something like a Sorrow Blue, both two cost, they stop you from doing anything during that turn. Then we come on to the Saber Leomon, I believe this is. Yes, Saber Leomon. And this is on Digivolution. Trash four Digivolution cards under one of your opponent's Digimon. Now, again, this is kind of one of those weird things where. Maybe your opponent digivolved up into a Cabotarium, uh, Circus Cabotariumon. Next turn, they're basically just going to go all out and suspend all your stuff. You can throw down the Saber Leomon, get rid of all their support, and they just sit there and go like, okay, I can't, can't suspend you, I can't do anything. The only issue with blue is it is quite power cre uh, creeped, in the sense of that it's very weak. But these are some pretty good effects, I think, that you might want to use in this D-Digivolution source deck. I think we've got a better name for this thing. 
And then we have Omnimon, the, the original Omnimon. And the reason why I bring this one out instead of having just like an X antibody form instead is because if you're going to get someone who's just built this massive board and say it's like a Diaboromon deck and just got like 10 tokens out somehow and they've got, what do they say? They've got, let's say they've got four tokens out, they've got two Diaboromons on the field and you just go, okay, play Omnimon, wipes their board and now they've got to think, okay, what can I do next turn to come back? Because nine times out of ten, if you've, someone's got built up a board and they haven't won by the end of that board today, they aren't coming back. And that's it for my thoughts here. I don't think this is terrible. I think this is a pretty good deck in general. I do think this is what we're going to see. I do think we're going to see Hexa Blue Man. I do think we're going to see a little Mon Loop. Loop gets better in uh, BT6. We're definitely going to see some Lord Nightmon. It's the easiest deck to run. It's very simple. It kind of plays itself. It's a free, it's very minimalistic deck. Which I think is what they had in mind when Green was just essentially just like so aggressive in the meta. I think this is roughly when Green got its ban restriction in Japan. Also, we had as basically since set two. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot different. They tried to make yellow more powerful to fight green. And obviously what they've done is they've just made, for the English meta, just a very powerful yellow lineup of decks for the last three sets. And I think people are getting very bored of that now. Uh, green's still pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's still pretty good. I think we'll see green in the meta still. Um, Nidhogg is still a very aggressive, scary card. Especially if your opponent attacked last turn and they've got some big monsters in the field and you just go, oh, I'm going to Nidhogg now. And then I'm going to digi-burst everything away. And then all your suspended cards go back to your... Your deck. And then they trash the Digivolution Source, obviously. And then they've got this 13k body just on the field going, okay. And that's kind of about it. Black, Diaborum, and you'll see, because it's a theme deck, and it's it does work, it's pretty good. But I don't think how meta it's going to be, especially because if you want to play the, the proper one, it's really, really expensive compared to the Japanese meta, because Japanese meta had their uh, tournament packs, they had one of each card in each pack. So it was a lot easier for them to build these themed decks when we got to. BT5. Yeah, if you really want to play the official Diaboromon game, it's like four to six hundred dollars, four to six hundred pounds. Like you're really paying for it. And then Red's got Shout and it's got the OTK turn two deck, which uh, we might see Shout. I don't think we'll see much of the OTK turn two deck. And then what else we got left? That's about it. Blue, blue, yeah. Blue's got the Hexa Blue one, it's probably its meta deck. But that's about it, Tamers. So thank you for being here for the last of the blue ones. Again, if I can figure out how to make a Shout Mon deck, I will. But that's it for now, guys. Fingers crossed we'll get something out later in the day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Goodbye. We love you, Tamers. Thank you for the support.